Well, here's a question for you. What is power? What is power? And how do you get power? How do you get power? Well, in order to get power, you got to find an electrical outlet and plug into it, right? Right? You got to plug into it. You got to plug into the power. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about power. Power that we get from God that is promised to us. But you got to go to the right source. You wouldn't just start looking at a, oh, here, can I plug in here? Can I, can I plug? No, you wouldn't do that. You'd go for the right power source. Go for the right power outlet. See, some of us don't feel very powerful, and uh, I get that. I've never been a very strong person, and so I don't feel very powerful in my own strength. But the power we're talking about is found in Jesus and through our relationship with Him. And maybe you've heard this before. Maybe you're like, oh, I know, we got our power, we got our strength from Jesus. But do you really know that? Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 through 20 as we're in our study under construction. It says this in verse 19 through 20, it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? Remember that part towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So, here we get a little bit about power. We see that word power. Greatness of his power towards us who believe. Power means ability. It means abundance. It means achieving power or being able. Being able. Is God able? Yes. Is God in you? Yes. Then you have that power too within you. <clears throat> now, what is being said um, here is the power that raised Jesus from the dead is available for us. Stop. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to us. Isn't that amazing? And it's working in him or her who trusts in him, who trusts in the Lord. So power is available to all of us through Jesus who defeated death and that same power reigns in us. Do you realize that? When I read this, what it makes me realize is how much I limit God can do in me. I don't need to limit myself, I, but I shouldn't, I shouldn't limit God. Sometimes we're like, oh, I can't do that. You're right. You can't do that in your own strength. But with the strength that God gives you, you certainly can. So if that's true, what can God give you the strength to do? Hmm? What can He give you the strength to do? He can give you the strength to not lie to stand up for what you believe in, honor your parents, share your faith with your friends, pray for your friends, <gasps> maybe even teach His Word. He can work through you in these ways. He can give you strength and power to do these things. That power is available to us. You just got to plug into it. I'm glad that God promises in His Word to give me power. Yeah, the power I need to follow Him. Yeah, Jesus gives me power not to be afraid and uh, not to freak out. Ah! Oh, through Jesus' power, I can be one brave turkey. <laughs> wow, Stefan, you're the bravest turkey I know and uh, the only turkey I know. <laughs> See, that reminds me. The graveyard uh, looks overcrowded. People must be dying to get in there. Ha, ha, ha. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22 says this, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. He put all things under his feet, that's Jesus, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. At the right hand of God is a place of distinction, being the second person in the Trinity, a position of privilege and power. And this shows his power. This shows Jesus' power and who he is. Now, he has power above all principality, power, might, dominion. Um, these are words that describe very, various categories of 
um, fallen angels, uh, demonic entities, and angelic beings. So the spiritual world, he is over. And we should never be afraid of that because John 4, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So, Jesus is over all the powers, all the powers of the world. Jesus has power over them, and the same power that caused him to be resurrected is in you. we got to keep hammering this through, because sometimes we just see kind of a Sunday school Jesus. <clears throat> oh, peaceful Jesus. He's so peaceful, and he's got a beard, and he looks so meek and mild. Yeah, but he's powerful, powerful. Powerful. He is powerful. We have to remember that. Whatever we are struggling with, we are told we have power um, that it took to raise Jesus uh, in us. We have that same power. We need that strength to follow Jesus. We need that strength. We need that power to say no to sin and grow closer to Him. And these may seem like simple things, but growing closer to Him is a lifelong goal. So, if this is true, what can God give you the strength to do? We've already talked about that a little bit, but take this week, and as you read your Bible, think about that. If this is true, and we believe it is, what can He give you the strength to do? And now it's time to dig deeper with Dudley. You know, I use this voltage checker here mm -hmm, to check if the electrical socket has power. Yeah, just like we check the Bible for where we get our power. Yeah. I get real power from God's Word, man, the Bible. Oh, yeah. And if I put my hand in the Bible, I won't get shocked either. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yup, that's very true. <laughs> Always remember, when you dig down deep, you gotta hit rock. Uh, Jesus is our rock. Yeah! <laughs> With that, let's pray. Jesus, we love you so much, and we are so thankful that we can learn and read and apply the fact that you give us power. Help us to walk in that strength and walk in that power today and all this week. We love you, Jesus, and we pray all these things in your name. Amen. God bless you. Bye.